Hi, I'm Craig. Um, I've owned uh, hole number 1370 for nearly a year now. And this will be a bit of a report on how it's been so far. Well, I've pretty much stayed on the East Coast since I got it. I've uh, got done from Maine all the way down to the Florida Keys and west as far as uh, the Baton Rouge area. You know, did the Gulf Coast from Baton Rouge back down to Florida. I've done, gosh, the length of the Outer Banks, um, the Skyline Drive, Blue Ridge Parkway, and uh, did the entire Natchez Trace, which I haven't done in years. That was great fun. That was a lot of fun. It was um, a bit overwhelming because, you know, in your regular travels, if you see another Oliver in a month, you're pretty excited about it, you know, because there's just not many of them out there. And then at the owner's rally, I think I counted just over a hundred. And that was a little strange, especially when you're up at top of the lodge, you look down, it looks like a bunch of Tic Tacs <laughs> scattered in a campground. It was pretty cool. <laughs> But, and, and I also, you know, want to comment, it was, you know, I met a lot of the other owners there, and it's a, a, a surprisingly diverse group. I mean, it was really, it was a lot of fun meeting the other owners. And some of the, some of the ingenious ways people have made their Olivers work for them was quite phenomenal. I mean, and also, um, got quite the introduction to Starlink. I met a few owners that were using Starlink for the first time. And that was, uh, that was an interesting experience. I was keeping track, but um, I kind of stopped doing that. But I'm guessing I'm in the neighborhood of about 20,000 miles so far. And, and flawlessly. I mean, the only issue I had with it was with the uh, water heater. And, um, you know, they were able to find some service time for me here. And uh, it turned out it was just a sensor that was bad. But other than that, everything has worked as expected. You know, the, the camper is definitely rugged. I, I don't baby it on the road. And I don't, um, I'm not afraid to take you know, smaller roads through some of the, you know, some of the, you know, smaller state parks and the Appalachians and whatever. And, you know, to, to that note, the, um, the real beauty of the Oliver's width comes into play, you know, being that it's only eight feet wide as opposed to eight and a half like your normal camper, it doesn't off track very much. You know, so if your truck goes through, your camper's going through, you know, you just, as long as you have enough air clearance up above you. You know, the, um, you don't have to worry about it dragging its tail into a ditch when you're on a, you know, a tight switchback or something. It's gonna go where your truck is. You know, it's, uh, and it's surprisingly smooth behind you under most conditions. You know, it actually handles the bumps better than my truck does. <laughs> the, most of the comments are on how sleek it looks. You know, they, they really like, you know, just the shape of it and the look of it. Um, you know, I don't always ask people if they want to see the inside, but, you know, they're, they're really, they, if they start really taking a close look at things, they really are... You know, especially if there's someone who's owned several campers, they're amazed at how the, you know, the you know the construction of the frame and all that. They're you know this thing's pretty tough, and um, you know they basically, I would say the majority of the time they want to compare it to an airstream. They go, look, it looks a lot like an airstream. Is it as good as an airstream? And I'm, I, 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 I believe it might be slightly better, <laughs> but it's, um, what were we talking about? What, what, what other people think of it? Um, the definitely having, you know, I, I, I got the, um, 
the uh, street side awning as well as the curbside awning on there. And um, it's amazing because a lot of people have thought that that's just a dummy awning so it looks more symmetrical. Because apparently that's what they do on some of the bigger class A's. And uh, I was like, no, that's, a, that's an actual awning. <laughs> you know, what I said or what I should have said <laughs> was, um, you know, you really have to examine what your mission is going to be, you know, how, how are you going to use the camper? And um, my advice would still be the same. You know, if you're looking for something that is, you know, really luxurious and has all kinds of fancy features in it, and you're going to spend a lot of time inside the camper, this might not be the one for you. You know, if you're looking for something that um, can pretty much go anywhere, you know, and um, has the capability of, you know, you can exist without being connected to utilities and all that, you know, I, I would consider the Oliver a strong candidate. You know, you just have to bear in mind that there are limitations associated with that. You know, the, you know, it's got a pretty robust solar and battery system, but that isn't a panacea for everything. You know, it, you do have to manage your usage. And that part of it's kind of fun because the, the camper does a good job of giving you information, you know, once you learn how to access all of it. <laughs> you know, so you, you can, you can, you know, you can, you can be quite comfortable off the grid with it. You just have to bear in mind that, you know, you have a limited amount of generating capability and storage capability and you have to work within those limits. So I guess that would be different than my original assessment in that respect. But, um, you know, again, you know, you know, there is no, I'm sure several people have said this, there really is no perfect camper. You know, there's what's right for you at the time. And this one definitely is, is right for me at this time.